Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am Top One Dragon and we have Eric the Second Sten Kilson back with us. And today I'm going to start off before we get into the main of things with a little historical fact about Sweden. And today we're gonna to talk about Bjorn. Bjorn Irish side. You know, you might know Bjorn. Uh, this, not this fine gentleman, but not you, not you, you, Duke Bjorn, the first Ironside of Upland, and Bjorn is a very interesting figure in history. Not much is known about him generally and what we do know tend to come from the 13th century Icelandic sagas and other outside sources found in French, Italian, and English literature and some Spanish literature but I'll get to that in a moment but Bjorn Ironside you might know him also from the hit show Vikings or maybe one of his brothers, Ivar the Boneless, or Sigurd Snake in the Eye. Now, you might be wondering if Bjorn was a real person, as I stated. As his father, Ragnar Lothbrok, or Ragnar Lodbrok, which means soggy pants, is a disputed figure in history. However, there are many historical texts, as I said, from English, French, and Latin sources that mention Bjorn and his brothers, leading to some credence that Ragnar and Bjorn and other figures during the Viking Age were, in some parts, real people, or even, in the, mainly in the case of Ragnar, titles given to many famous Vikings to kind of link themselves together. And for more of that little train of thought, I highly recommend the Nordic Mythology podcast hosted by Dr. Matthias Nordvig and Daniel Farrand as they do cover Ragnar and other characters from the show Vikings in more detail. Mainly, I do recommend the episode specifically where they talk about Ragnar Lodbrok. But as for Bjorn, he is credited of being a king of Sweden. I use that air quotes. Really, he's more of a duke of Upland, which is what the Tao history says in CK3. He was a duke of Upland, or Uppsala, or Sweden, around 867. Explaining why Paradox allows us, if you go to the 867 dark start date, to play as Bjorn Armas the Bjorn Ironside in the Great Heathen Army, where he and his brothers go to England to take revenge on Petty King Ayla of Northumbria for the murder of their father. But as for Bjorn himself, there's not much known about Bjorn's time as a king of Sweden. Again, air quotes with that. In fact, there's not much known in general about Sweden or the area that would become Sweden. During the Viking Age, you get more information about Norway and Denmark because of their proximity to England, the Holy Roman Empire, France, and in parts, Spain, and we'll get to that in a moment. But Sweden, they tend to, instead of going westward, they go more eastward into Ruthenia, Novgorod, Estonia, Latvia, well, Estonia, Livonia, Prussia, that area. They go more eastward. And if some chieftains would establish the Kiev and the Rus area, which would one day become Kiev. Ukraine and Russia. So you can kind of see that even in those Slavic countries, they have roots in Scandinavia because of the Vikings. But as for Bjorn himself, 
it is recorded that he has two sons at the very least. One named Eric and the other Relif or Refill. Eric would end up succeeding Bjorn after his death. Then Eric would be succeeded by his nephew, who is also named Eric. Most likely Eric the Victorious, who ruled from 970 to 995. Now if we go to the title history here. We see Eric the Victorious. Who, if we look back, is the nephew to... Bjorn Ironside. Or grandson. Again, strange family history that we really don't know all that much. Because not a lot is recorded during that time, Brittany. It's mainly oral traditions. But you have heard me mention Spain a lot, and that is because of one person in particular and if we go you might see where i'm going with this down to the county of montague we have one person that stands out a lot in history and if you know ck3 you might have played this fine fine gentleman hesting count hesting who is historically noted to having a very good friendship with Bjorn Ironside. And like most things from the Viking Age when it comes to pointing out historic figures, both legendary and historical, it's very much complicated. And the reason that we do have texts that link Count Histing to Bjorn comes from Spain and the Umayyad Caliphate there. Because they recorded raids from Histing along with Bjorn when they would go down to Spain and raid together. So, while we don't know much about Bjorn as a person, he is credited being a very important figure in Sweden's history. Both if he was an actual person, you know, himself, or was just a bunch of notable chieftains smashed together to link to the story of Ragnar Lodbrok as Bjorn Ironside and his brothers Ivar, Ub, and Sigurd. That's kind of the historical fact that I have today. I, It's been a very busy week and I promise next week's historical fact will have a lot more meat to it. But I didn't want to talk at least very early on, about Bjorn, because he is a very fun character to play as in Crusader Kings 3, and just a interesting character to look at in general. Speaking of interesting characters, we still have King Eric II here, and his struggles to keep House Stenkil in charge of Sweden. And so far, we have two daughters... One who's sterile and one who's pretty dang good. Who is currently getting us a marriage proposal with the king of Denmark. Who is allied to the Greeks. Or more accurately, the Romans. And what is going on with the Seljuks? Defending against. War against Cerny. Wow. Wow. This has been going on for four years? They have four times the advantage on you. How? You have four times the advantage on them. How are you? How is this war not over yet? The AI, man. Some, I just question them sometimes. Anyway, let's get back to good old Scandinavia. I did not plan for events to pop this early, but I'm glad that I kind of did. Anyway, into the taiga. The woods have always been a vulnerable training ground. A valuable training ground. Everyone knows that any gallant knight is always on the lookout for new adventures. A malevolent talent. 
A malevolent tyrant, a secret trial, an innocent in need. I had explored this part of the taiga before. Perhaps that's what makes the sun rune seem like a test of valor. The church has abandoned. The church has been abandoned for decades, by the looks of it. Spider webs have replaced the glass on the windows. Broken trunks are now the new benches. Some birds fly away when I approach the rotten door. There are a few. Th there are a few things as tempting as an unexplored church. I may find something inside. My prince bishop, Adavald, would like to hear about such an important finding. I would gain stress because I'm brave, but I would also gain piety and opinion. We could just use this place as a new storeroom. Count uh, Niedrich gains abandoned church storeroom. Storage, which is plus 50% supply lines. Not bad. And that goes not anywhere that I'm going to anytime soon. So let's explore. Into the taiga, a treasure. A tree has grown just beyond the altar. Its crown has replaced the fallen parts of the roof. Next to it, there's a wooden chest that someone has been using recently. Judging by the lack of dust or mold, inside, a small treasure. The Sword of Holy Devotion. Powers plus 2, piety per night, point 0.5. Wow. A richly adorned sword. Someone has carved a prayer along its blade. Find the sacred ground of the county of Niedrich. I shall cherish this sacred gift. I gain 50 martial lifestyle and I gain the sword of holy devotion. I've been in need of a good sword. That's that's awesome. Uh, what? I'm awoken by a scream. King Eric from outside. The roaring cry of the horrified servant. As I crash back to wakefulness, I feel the sweet soaking my body. As I crash back to wakefulness, I feel the sweat soaking my body, closely followed by the searing, scorching heat. The sitting room is on fire, my skin already half blistered from the blaze. I've <coughs> got to get out of here. How did this even blast it, candles? The fire is blocking the door. It's only going to get worse. The only way out is through. 2% chance I'm spared. 8% chance I die. <gasps> I lived! I lived! How am I alive? I should have died! Oh. I almost always roll bad. I mean, I should... Oh. I'm alive! I'm al And I get athletic. <laughs> like, it really feels like I'm constantly being distracted by... <laughs> suspicious thoughts and erotic fantasies. Of all the hardships of my everyday life, it's all too easy to lose myself in daydreams and forget about reality. These desires are clearly interfering with my life. But what should I do about them? Perhaps the new view of God will help me. Historicism and the teaching that Jesus has two natures, one divine, one human. Historicism has been declared as heretical by most Christian faiths. Despite this, its unique outlook has garnered followers in places as far as East China, India, and even Mongolia. Or I will be taking the best stress perk in the game, Athletic. I shouldn't... There, there's no reason why I should have lived there. Stress, coping, friendly competition. I'm in the middle of my training when I spot Baron Ingwald. Also exercising. I look him up and down and not only does he, does he appear to be in good health, but also peak physical fitness. I love to measure my prowess against his. But in what way? Should I take multiple factors into account if I wish to win? 
raw strength or mix that could include stamina or wits. He's a very good steward. At very good powers. And he is quick, so hopefully he'll have some kids soon involved. In fact, I'm just going to pin you in case your wife passes away or I can enforce a divorce. I cannot. Never mind. Uh, let's see. Suggest, suggest that the two of you wrestle. You think you can overpower by sheer prowess? Let's see. I do have the prowess on him. For that, I'll gain sweaty stench, but that's fine. Challenge him to a sparring match where prowess and martial lead to victory. I could challenge him to a foot race where prowess and health. With playing or focus on finishing your record training machine. We'll just suggest. You know what? A sparring match. Let's go. I, I still can't believe I, I survived. With that note, we're going to <laughs> continue on pushing into. Vosul. Vosulvid. At some point, and possibly start our expansion into good old Finland. So I'll be back when we're ready to do one of that. We're also going to have to keep an eye on dear old mother, who is in fine health. We're in decent health, but we're doing all right. I'll be back when something interesting. Happened, so we're ready for the next phase of our grand plan. I'll just hire a force guide here. No need to get lost. And I'll pay the 13 gold and we shall go on a hunt. Hunt, a fresh start. My counselor, Count Tuck, is hosting a hunt in Finnevad. Finvinden, and time has come for us to depart. We should be able to proudly represent the house of Stenkeeling. Stenkeeling. It should be good sports if the event is properly organized. I can't wait. I still think this is the coolest thing ever. If you're wondering why I'm uh, looking for secrets in Count Hook in Ivinson's court. Uh, he has two daughters, one of which is married to the Duke of Ustergotland. And I'm trying to gain this county for myself because it's in Bertslagen, a duchy that I wish to hold as my primary, as my secondary duchy. So there's my reason for that and as a true populace that could be something but we're on the hunt making camp as we await the arrival of the rest of the guests count took has started on the preparations his game keepers check the woodlands each day for signs of quarry while building a camp closer to the hunting grounds I've checked my gear and horse many times. It won't be long now. Let's look at the guest list. So there is me, there is Grand Mare Bustin, there is Duke Sven, there's Count Hocken, there's Count Churchmund, Count Tyke, Count Feist, Count Vladimir, Baron Ingvold, Mayor so Sokov, Mayor Ustin, Mayor Sofkir. Sveke, Mer Breg, Mer Elf, Mer Grim, Isbion, Bog Biach, and Unknown of Kuspenos. Any of my Swedish listeners out there, let me know how well I pronounce all those names. I can't wait to hear you in the comments. So soon. So. I want to... Focus on not recreation. Uh, prestige could be good. 
But I think I still need to try and gain people's favor. Mainly... Maybe not gain people's favor. I can seduce, I can murder. I think slaying a beast would be fun. Let's go. To sex. Success chance is 57.5%. So, um, that seems pretty good. So, I'll let that go in the background, and I'll be... We'll just wait for the next event. Pack of Pests. Espion, Count Tuk's master of the hunt, summons the party together as the light reaches the camp. In the Targa near Finvenden, the local gameskeeper have secured the vicinity for the recent tracks and fumes. The pack is a nuisance, scavenging from farms and retreating deep into the woods. Ultimately, Count Tuk decided he wanted to hunt a wolf today. Let's start out there. Let's get out there. We'll sway a wolf. Peril, middling. Prestige, middling. Oh. Skilled master of the hunt. Yes, one. My marshal, Tildenham, is crouched down on the ground, humming cheerfully, picking Narcissus. Narcissus? He appears to have lost all interest in the hunt. King, what a bounty of nature. Look at these plants. Truly, the wealth of the earth knows no bounds. We do not appreciate these simple treasures enough. Get back on your horse. Slightly increases hunter trait experience. You gain 35 prestige, gain success chance, but I lose 10 opinion of him. Or fascinating. What's that flower? Uh, learning lifestyle could be very good here. Backing stress. Kristen could do with these herbs. I gain stock medicines. This character's physician has plenty of stocks and medicinal herbs, both rare and common. Learning plus one and disease resistance, medium health boost. That's good. But he gains removed from the activity and opinion. Or I could just accuse him of wisp of witchcraft. Yeah, get back on your horse. Yep. My acquaintance, Espion, signals across the force. The whole wolf pack crouches in a hollow not far off. The beast bolts on your approach, howling the alarm as they retreat into the dense undergrowth, bang snarling. Count Tuk takes off after the beast crying. Come on, it's getting away. Let's go. Oh boy. We can hardly keep up with the blessed beast as it darts and weaves through the dense trees, howling wildly. Scaling a rise and disappearing into a dense thicket, the wolf is gone as quickly as it appeared, before painting dogs and sweaty horses to show for it. The damn thing is gone. The hunt fails. <sighs> we tried. Hunts like these are a pure joy. I cannot wait for next year. Mary uh, gathers this point, partying exhausted hounds for the trip home. The wolf indeed elude us, this time. Let us leave this adventure behind, for now. I lose stress, I gain prestige, I gain the trait Hunter, and I gain 5 trait experience in Venator, which is Hunter, which is prowess plus 1, stress loss, and opinion. Nice. And my knights, Stuart, stalwart of the king's knights, gain glory. Count Tuk loses a lot of stress because they are generous and a hunter. They gain three experience and most of the prestige. And every participant guest gains 90 
Prestige. Let's go. Oh no. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's head home. You want a war. Hmm. And that is you converted. Now we'll get this area also converting. I need to try and get the gold to utilize it. Arrival. At long last, I'm finally home. There's nothing better than arriving back in Sudamanland after a long journey. I look forward to resting for some time. At the call of the road, I can serve onward. My caravan master, Guillermo, reports that we have journeyed for 168 days and traversed nine barrenies. Thank God I can go inside again. But someone is my cooked. Sigismund. Why, you scoundrel. And my wife is pregnant. Please be a son. But it is time to attack another county. And I'm thinking, let's see, your ally to them, that would be tough. But you have pretty much weak allies. You'll be the target. So I'm just going to get the troops moved over here. And good old. Can I just holy war for the whole duchy? I can. Even better. And I am going to call King Svendin into the war. I see you're attacking. Oh boy. Looks like the Varangian Adventurers is back into it. And you're also helping the Byzantine Emperor, so yeah. Looks like we caught them just in time. Sweet. And you have a seeker on a guess. Deviants. All right, we'll do the blackmail. I'd rather have a secret on the man himself, but yeah, you get what you get. Okay, this is a travesty. Okay, we're doing well here. There's the Danes. My vassal Grand Mayor Boston has proven himself highly capable, especially in academic matters. There are some projects that there are some projects I would like to undertake in the grand city of Gotland, my liege. With your blessings, of course. Take the reins, and I get encouraged development for ten years in the city of Grand Gotland. Yeah, take the reins. I, I trust you. Back with you now, kind of sway to me on my side. All that's left is getting this guy to help me a little bit more. And my mother. Whew. All right, there's the bulk of the Danish army. We had a little setback, but we're all good now. Oh, they're attacking my capital. Oh, boy. Three months, seven months. We can make it. Especially if we can sell the port. Very well. You know what you're doing. Hey, we sold the book. Weren't okay, that is... That's going to be very useful in the future. Now yeah, we can... Resiege that layer right now. We need to head back home. Sail down here so that way we won't get the penalty in the future. Let's 
Sell to Upsilon. We'll also re-raise the army here. See, Desert Park will be gone in now. What's this? Hold court. We'll hold court momentarily. We need to lift the siege first. Let's go. Now we'll can I cross over. I can cross over into Finland. Looks like the Danes are doing well there. Good, good. And that is this war one. Sweet. So who's all we need to help here? Okay, so we're going to sail down there and about the Danes. And very quickly, I'll give this territory to this Swedish man. And I'll give this territory to this Swedish man. And let's see, I am going to walk off some stress real quick it's sometimes hard to find the motivation to remain consistent when exercising by myself I could try to find myself a partner who then would not only motivate me on bad days but would also be someone that I can compare myself to when tracking my own progress what kind of companion would suit me the most someone I can look up to someone to keep me on my toes or perhaps someone for an alarm I know I should never aspire to be. Let's see. There is my Marshal. Two of the month. And let's see. We will go cross to friendship and 50% chance he'll gain athletic. Or Count Huckin. The man I'm currently trying to not deal with. Hey. Um, I think Tooltman would be good. I I have plans with uh, with Hiken. Oh, that's actually very close cool to succeeding. Hmm. Maybe I should have helped Harkin instead. And our uh, martial perk, living off the land. Supply capacity and travel safety. That's very good. Mm. Okay, living off the land. Let's see, how old am I? I'm 34. I'm going to finish off the strategist tree and then probably switch over to learning. In the meantime, I am going to switch over to authority because we've got a lot of places that uh needs uh it's chilled out and we'll lose this embarking in two days now we attack yep that should pretty much be the end of this war now Oh, what's going on in Poland? Oh, they're attacking Ruthlenia. And jeez, Novgorod has pizzas of Ruthlenia. I will say, one of the hardest campaigns that I kind of did, especially for achievement run, is uh, trying to form Russia as a real real kid. That campaign, I. The first time I tried to do it, I almost got it within one lifetime, but I kept dying at the last stretch of it. And I would have so many sons, they would partition my lands to where I just couldn't do it. And so instead of trying to get it in one lifetime, I tried to focus on getting it in the second life. And I usually got it. 
for me and Oh, that achievement still haunts me. I have it. I have it. Thankfully, I have, but it still haunts me. The White Stag, my vassal Merit Elf, known for his interest in venery, enters my chambers, enters my chambers, brimming with excitement. I'm hearing strange things from the gameskeeper of Alden. They tell of glimpses of a stag with snowy white fur. It is said to roam the woods. Though none have got close to it, there are indeed legends of such beasts. White, you say. The County of Adrand gained legendary sighting for three years. A mythical animal has reported been sighted in this county. A legendary hunt may be held in this county. Can I go on a legendary hunt? Where is it? Where where is Father? Where's Can I go on a legendary hunt? I need to remember that place. Your suede and we'll go. Or hold court real quick. Send in the partitioners. Mares Sulvge Sulkvia, who has clearly been working himself up about something, greets me. My king, the dogs of Abolga, think we are better than us. Think they are better than us, he spews, cracking their haughty jokes each market day. Mare Ustin, the hysterical commoner, needs to be put in his place, and these damnable Fools made to respect Nopikin, the foremost city of the region. You will stop this foolishness. Where did it begin? Mm. Bold words, but you will sell this with action. Eh. Nordkoping is undoubtedly preferable. I mean. You kind of don't like me. You kind of like me. Where even is no pooping? Oh, yeah, it, that is definitely the most performable town. A haggard looking peasant now stands in front of me. My lord, I beg for your help. A monster prowls in the taiga, a joyful din. Jovadono. Killing cattle and farmers alike. Few have seen it, but the mangled remains of its poor victims leave no doubt. It's clearly a huge bear, as bloodthirsty as few have ever been seen. Please send your strongest hunters and save us from its vicious claws. I shall fell the beast myself, for I am an expert. Hunter. Oh, not expert hunter, but I am a great hunter. I shall fell the beast. I may live to regret, but I shall do it. Before me stands my vassal count, Tuller. His head hung low. My lord, Jorn has been hit hard by the recent raiding and looting. The people are starving, our fields are not recovering. Our livestock is not enough to survive anymore. We beg you to intervene and to save your devoted subjects with your great magnanimity. You're evil. Yeah, I, ju I did just grant you that land, so yeah, I, I should probably help you. Mm. I know just the right person for the job. Isen. You feel me, huh? As official inspector to surprise the uh, recovery of the county. We gonna release my court and Yeah. And they'll just person for the right job. Or I could grant a tax relief. That that could be useful as well. Or I could just send them some gold. You know what? 
you're not going to be making that much money anyway, at least for a long time. So, I'll grant a tax relief. You are indebted to me, though. My business is done. Now, where is this bear? The monster, the Juve, Juve, no. That's what I'm going with. All the preparations completed. I set out with a selected group of guards to face the infamous monster that's terrorizing this town. It doesn't take us long to find. A clear trail of blood leads us straight to the creature's abode. I was already informed of what to expect, but... When the massive bear finally stands in front of me, I can't help but shiver. Face me, you foul beast! Seventy percent chance you swallowed the monster. The county of Jojovold, which is a place I recently conquered, gains monster killed, proper development growth, proper opinion, and danger. All good. I gain experience traits in Venator, and 5% chance I gain the Hunter. Nice. But 29% chance of roaming beasts for 5 years. Face me. I did not gain the epithets of Hunter. Eh, you win some, you lose some. But we will finish this county strong. Gosh. Probably also fight this one. Because that is a place that I am interested in. It would also kind of help me cut off Norway. Because eventually we will be fighting Norway. Oh no. Harold died. Now we got Magnus II, the bastard. Jeez. So I think I will actually fight this place now although I should probably let my troops continue recovering first Yeesh. but how is my mother doing oh my mother is not doing well I'm sorry mother but that is going to me That is going to my brother. That is going to my other brother. Which is fine. I can eventually get for myself. And Ireland is going to me. So I will have two out of the three. Counties of Upland. Well, three out of the four counties of Upland to myself. So, not bad. Not bad. I may let my other brother have it for a while. But, greetings, my impeccable liege. I've arrived in Stritches to pay homage to you, glorious king. As a show of my loyalty, I hope my pledge of submission alone is evidence of my honor. I received Duke Sven. I wait patiently on my throne for the arrival of Duke Sven, who is soon announced and ushered before me. He kneels in deference, offering nothing but his oath to faithfully serve as a vassal of the kingdom. At least I bet the Duke arise, conforming my satisfaction in Sven's rights to the lands he rules in my stead. Serve me well, Duke Sven. But... I'm going... On a hunt. We'll go into some slight death. But. Hunt. Oh. Oh. Okay. This, this is cool. So. Hunt. Choose a core from a variety of local animals. Increase venture hunt trade experience. High peril. Grants more prestige. Martial sexes may actively participate. 
Non-martial sexes may spectate. I can choose falconry. Okay. Proud and cunning beasts stalk the wilderness. Outwinning and overcoming them test valor and home skills. Though costly, hawking and falconry provide a joy and the mastery of nature beyond compare among the noble pursuits. Or legendary. Mythical creatures are often dismissed by the legend by the learned as a legend. But the force may yet hold much mystery. We're going on a legendary hunt. And let's see. Yep, and Valdrin, that's where I want to go. Oh, I really... Mm. Oh, okay. Increase success chance somewhat. Effect increases with court servants. Amenities. Okay. Party size. More prestige on completion. Unlike the knights and lazy or martial educate courtiers and guests join. Or I can have substantial or intimate. Okay. 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 This is cool. Okay, so I'll come back to that as soon as I have the money for it. That is very, very cool. Toik. Toik. Oh, I'm gonna miss you, buddy. How's your son? He's not so good. I'm gonna miss you, pal. You take care. I'll get small and soon as a place for him. The tired of battle. I've seen how it happens. The slight glow in the middle of combat. The brief moments when neither side is pressing into the fray and the melee breaks. Like waves parting around a rock. I will always be pressing the attack. I gain reckless. Time to rearm with whatever weapons aren't stuck in a body. And I gain Reaver. Hmm. Minimum bow roll minus four. Maximum bow roll plus six. I think Reaver might be better. Mainly because of the hostile county attrition minus 75. So, yeah, that... Let's see. What am I already... I'm open terrain expert, and I'm a logician. Yeah, I think Reaver fits. S4. Ah, Tyke was such a good steward. Mm. I should probably put my mother on the council. But I'm going to put Boasting instead. Let's see, you got three months until you finish converting that county to Swedish. I got converted to a lot of other counties as well. But we're slowly working on it. What is this? A foul smell. My leash, a word. My counselor, Count Tolk, approaches me during a brief lull while attending court matters. He gestures to a less populated spot in the room, and I follow him there. I'm concerned about the state of Sodomanland Castle. A holding a meeting in one of the rooms we all know is a horrific smell. It must have come from the latrines the floor below. I implore you to consider paying a f paying to fix the neglected parts of the building. I'll ensure the problem gets fixed as soon as possible. My steward will handle the matters. I can either lose all my money, or some of my money. Eh. Uh, I'll get the problem fixed. K. 
can't take that. How dare you? Is my wife pregnant again? No. But at least my daughter's doing well. She's going to become a good spy master. You uh go with diplomacy. And have you educate by Guillermo. Meanwhile, I will definitely be educating you, Astrid. And you're too young. All right, honey. Yeah. How mad are people? Not too mad. I th I'm going to take this opportunity to romance my wife. 65% chance of success. Why is it not higher? All right. I'm going to take this opportunity to romance my wife. The time has come to let my feelings towards Queen Bona be known. I want her to remember this day for the rest of her life. I inspire her by winning a sparring match. Decoration of love. I crew one of my most senior soldiers and sail for Sodomanland. We practice our routine after each day's ride. Once we arrive, we begin to spar in the main courtyard. The crowd gathers and their cheers soon draw none other than the rowdy queen, Bona. The soldier fights valiantly, but I disarm him with a final flawless thrust. I kneel before Bona and declare my noble intentions. I dedicate this victory to you, wife. Bringing you honor is my only desire. My morsel is speechless, but clearly flattered. What else would she be smiling thusly? Bana won't resist my charms for long. Romance. Competition. As of late, all my visits to Bana have been ruined by my vassal, Count Hogan. He follows her everywhere. Like a lost puppy, he attempts to charm the Lady of Laughable. Yet, I fear his persistence will be rewarded. A duel will prove who is worthy. How is it fit? Oh, he has 17 powers, all right. A duel will prove who is worthy. It seems like I underestimated Count Hawkins' ability. My defeat at his hands was painful and embarrassing in equal measure. My own solace is that Queen Bomb was not there to witness it. I shall have my revenge! Or we can say, forget about. Boy. I will have my revenge. Yeah. Oh. Alright. Or shall we? I really want to make him an angry vassal. Not yet. Oh, uh, oh, he is getting up in age. Like he's. I rather take this as a precaution. So yeah, uh, hand it over, my friend. Just so. And how angry are people now? Not too bad. You're you're pretty angry, but otherwise not not too angry. I I can live with that. As for this duchy, I probably need to save to make Uxland, but I am going to switch over to the main focus so that way I can uh, keep my income. 
it, I probably do need to, yeah, do that. Hey! My darling Tiny Volga. Nice. Wanna go on a hunt, Tok? Alright, we'll, we'll go on a hunt. I enjoy your hunts. Let's see, Entourage is a pretty safe route. Yeah, it's a safe route. I don't need to take anyone with me. I'll join the hunt. A fresh start. My counselor, Count Tuk, is hosting a hunt in Nyordung. And time has come for us to depart. I should be able to proudly represent the House of Stenkiel. This should be good sport if the event is properly organized. Oh. Not good. <laughs> As we await the arrival of the rest of the guests, Count Tuck has started the preparations. Yeah, all good, all good, all good. And... Yeah. Eh... Soon. I'm going to try and befriend... Count... Fucking... Sell... Things with him. I did it for the good of the people. The good of the people. Oh, that's cool. There's a little detail. I didn't even notice that. There's a little crown that shows who's the primary heir. That's neat. Esperms, Count Talk, Master of the Hunt, summons party together as the light reaches the hunting grounds nestled in Wishing Souls Woods. The local gameskeeper has scoured the vicinity for recent tracks and fumes. The pack is nuisance, scavenging from farms and. Oh, we're on the hunt for wolves again. Nice. Your ass are true. Interesting. Oh no. My lines with the Swe with the Danes have gone. Oh boy. Wait. Green market. Oh. Now I have an he has an unpressed claim to England. But a press claim to Den. Ooh. Interesting. I want to break the betrothal. Hmm. Speaking of betrothals, I should probably uh, get my other daughter in lines. Alright, we're ranger in lines with the Hungarians. Sweet. All right, waiting for the word from the scent hounds. The party rests in a shaded copse. Hawkins stands not far off. This is my chance to impress him. Count Hokum, how are you? It's not often we get a chance to talk, I open informally. He seems surprised, but not hostile to my conversation. We are both hunters. We both have... We're both tough soldiers. But he is an inspiring blade master, a flexible leader, and a pilgrim. Time to tame and fly a raptor is truly alive. To tame and fly a raptor is to truly live. Mm. Excellent. Count Hawkins seems to have much in common with me. Exceedingly diving to mutiny of bowstrings and traps. When I move on, we can hardly be separated. I know I would find the right words to win him over. I think I won him over. Good, good. My marshal, Tjodmon, is crouched down on the ground, humming cheerfully, picking arses. Oh, this again, uh. Marshal? Back on the horse. My acquaintance, Barak, signals across the taiga. The whole wolf pack crouches in a hollow not far off. The beast bolts up on our approach, howling the alarm as they retreat into the dense trees, fangs snarling. Count Tok takes off after the beast, crying, Come on, 
It's going away. Oh boy. Will we succeed this time? We did! Whether tried or defiant, the wolf at last halts, turns towards us, and lets out an almighty howl. Count Oak takes aim as the party keeps the exhausted wolf in place. Exhale and loose. The arrows strike true, straight into the beast's heart. Good shot. Ooh, wolf fangs. That's pretty cool. Prestige, party, and glory. Wow, that is pretty cool. Let's finish this hunt. Oh, I got a martial park. Sweet. No, I didn't keep it, but that's fine. Yeah, let's go home. Let's get inside. And now, for my own hunt. A legendary hunt. I want to make sure I choose the right place. Get a flourishing gang. Can't really increase party size. But I'm going to focus on slaying. I want this deer. And travel options is pretty safe. Really, there's nothing to be worried about, but I will hire a force god just in case. And we're going to have all kinds of people here. Good, good, good. And I'll throw in the uh, court guests and my knights. And let's start this hunt. I can't wait. We pursue. We pursue the stuff of legends. Call the road. Since leaving home nearly a few days ago, I've seen highs and lows. Reveled in the wind blowing through my hair, and lemonade the rocks in my boots. There are so many places, so many things I have yet to see. Out there on the open road, I feel free of the stuffy castle, if only for a little while. The roads are full of pilgrims and wanderers. Perhaps it is among them that I will find peace of mind. Out here, I am truly free. I am a traveler now. Sweet! Weird Whispers I've noticed that Philippe avoids me more than usual. He always sits at the opposite end of the table whenever we invite. Whenever we're invited to a feast and constantly refuses my company while camping. We may not have the best of relationships, but that attitude is starting to tire me, especially when I overhear him defaming me. Eric is a brash vampot. I'd be a way better king than him. You want to know how it is? I'll show you. Prowess challenge. Uh, Caravan Master Guillermo. Take care of it. Yes. Caravan Master Guillermo. Take care of this, will you? Danger. Tempting fruit. Our road takes us through the treacherous parts of no coping. While I scan for any dangers ahead, a rustling bush grabs my attention. 
could be a while out. As I brace myself for impact, Berg jumps out of the bush instead, holding a plant. You scare me back. Anyway, let me see what you have here. Some kind of fruit? I exclaim. Yes! It looks and smells so delicious. I wonder what it tastes like. Maybe I'll take just a little bite. Hold on. Oh, if it's poisonous. Mm. So a rash appears where the plant touch. I gain unknown plant rash, tiny health penalty, and gains unknown pain. Mm. I'll let him eat it. Nice. And now, as we await the arrival of the rest of the guests, my servants can get started on preparations. The games keeper checked the woods lens each day for science quarry while establishing a camp closer to the hunting grounds. Out there somewhere, the white stag waits and watches. Soon. Count Toka summons the party as the sun rises over the camp in the forest near Valdrin. The local gameskeeper has scorched of insanity the recent tracks and fumes. They haven't found anything. I can feel it. The elusive creature is out there, somewhere nearby. The beast will be mine. Once again, I found myself in the wild, searching for the loose of white stag. I'm yet to spot even a single trace of it. That is until I see a set of animal tracks laying far away from the path. Knut grabs my arm fervently and pulls me away. He assures me that these are not the tracks of the legendary beasts. An ordinary stack. Follow the tracks regardless. Or, I suppose you're right. You're just a courtier, Canute. We follow the tracks regardless. Now, riding the head of the group, the force suddenly grows still. The silence is almost palpable. Even the sound of my horse's hooves seem to melt away. Just as I'm about to turn back to find the others, I glimpse it ahead of me. Blurry as a dream, a stag, as white as snow. The rumors are true. My huntsmen say they know the place of the beast covered, and the nearby water holes and grazings the stag frequents. Though it is by no means easy things to do, if we were to carefully creep up on the buck, we could perhaps catch it unawares with our bows. Pah! Real hunters corner their prey. We perceive by stealth. We have been following a set of stack tracks through the taiga for a while, but I noticed that the tracks seem to mysteriously split in two. I begin following the tracks to the left, but Knut pulls me over to the right. Come on, my king. Clearly those tracks are old. We must follow the fresher ones. Upon our station, the left tracks soon appeared to be ever so slightly more faded than those on the right. I'll turn left. He loses opinion on me. Insulted. But... 30 57% chance of increased success, or I turn right with a decrease. We go left. I follow the beast tracks into the woodlands, as though in a trance, an almost unnatural silence hanging heavily over the world. King, there you are. The sun shouts startles me. Eric, the rest of my party have caught up. I got away. This time, you will gain strength each year the beast eludes you. You will lose stress because I'm stubborn. You fools! I almost had it! Or, I won't waste time on this folly. 
It got away. This time. Hunts like these are pure chore. I cannot wait for next year. The master of the hunt bird gathers the disappointed party and exhausts hounds for the trip home. The stag indeed eluded us. This time. Let us leave this adventure behind. For now. And I am getting to be a much better hunter. Let's finish this. The Trollen Path. The procession has ground to a halt. A stone throw away from Hooksby. I look over to see my courtier, Kristen, dismounted and intently staring at something on the ground. The other entourage members have gathered around him. Kristen looks up as I approach. My lord, there is an end path here. I may be a tad superstitious, but you should never cross an end path. He pauses. My great-grandmother died, and she never returned home. Fine. We will find another path. Eh... Yeah. You know what? We will find another path. Now listen to my position. At long last, I'm finally home. There's nothing better than arriving back in Sodomelan after a long journey. I look forward to resting for some time, but the call of the road beckons ever onward. My caravan master Guillermo reports that we have journeyed for 127 days to traverse 13 baronies. Thank God we can go inside again. And... Oh. We continue on with the romance. Very well. Now I'll do a little bit of uh, working out. Soon. I will find that white stag. It will be mine. Do I want to join that hunt? Defender of the Faith. There was a commotion among the children today. Anna, who was attempting to preach among her fellow youngsters, and became the target of a small fact. Astrid was fierce that anyone could target someone attempting to speak on behalf of God and chase away the other children. Anna, my daughter, you will serve the divine well, child. The guy will ignore this hunt. Though it is very tempting. Yeah, I'm going to decline the invitation. I'm, I'm sorry, mother, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Hmm. My wife is thirty-one. I'm thirty-seven, and I have no son. That might be a problem. White Stag. As the days pass, I hear nothing about the White Stag. Now I grow restless. Surely someone must have seen it. What about all the peasants who littered the force? Maybe I should appeal for their assistance. Send a missive. 
Elsin, break. Oh, we're not sink that low. I'll send a missive. Surely someone has heard about the stack. My wife is pregnant. Please be a son. Please. A son. Yeah. Oh, my niece. No, I I cannot accept this. I'm sorry. My niece shall marry someone of my dynasty. Well, not my dynasty, of my choosing. Maybe someone with inheritable traits. Yeah. Good. Now we need to increase more places. Sorry, my own personal domain. How dare you raid my domains? Probably get some more people. Do want to get some more Huskars. I do like Huskars. How are Huskars cheaper than Varangi Adventurers? Anyway, raise army. I'll help them rebuild. And I will attack the finish. Should probably also get some regular old pikemen. I'm sure I am attacking mostly in Taiga on planes, so Huskarls would actually be better. Or Vigman as well. I also do just need regular old Bowman. Oh, the Vigman or my Bowman that way. Hmm. Sweet. New Marshall Park. Another daughter of Hield. Where is the son? Like, legitimately, where's the son? I have four daughters and not one son. I might need to request a. I can't even request a divorce. Oh, well, I better hope that I can. Swear my way. Swayed my life to have another child. Hopefully, that is a son. But in any way, glimmering gold. Sweet Lady Bona, I sigh as I knew before. My only desire is to bring you honor and happiness. Pray tell me, how can I prove my love for you? Bona gives me a long look. Lady Uphill's necklace is lovely. She says and nods her head in a direction of count. Offield, the wife of my chancellor, Count Tuck. But it would look even better around my neck. Commission an identical necklace. Or. Yeah, commission an identical necklace. You will most likely get disinherited. You are. Alright? 
But I, I'm going to put you in a learning education. So that way I could possibly put you in the uh, Holy Order. And you, I guess I will teach. Astrid may become heir. But, with all that, I'm going to call the episode here. A lot of hunts have happened and we have started our search for the elusive white deer of Vendred. But, I do hope you all have enjoyed this episode. It is going to be a long one. But, I truly do enjoy it. And we are slowly... Starring our way into Finland proper. But, I've been Type 1 Dragon. You have all been awesome. And as always, stay safe out there. Oh, Hadua.